regardless of what you think the best diet is, if you think it's a keto diet or a paleo diet or a low carb diet or a Mediterranean diet or a vegan diet, take any version of those and consume them to excess to the point where you are no longer in energy balance and you are accumulating adipose tissue that leaks out of the subcutaneous space and gets into the liver, gets into the viscera, you're going to be unhealthy. Do you maybe want to take a minute to talk about why nutrition research is so flawed and so hard to do? And then because that's true, that kind of affects everything you look at within nutritional epidemiology and trying to understand kind of that question of which diet is quote unquote best. I think it comes down to the complexity of the organism at question, which is us, and the complexity of the intervention, which is eating. So it's really the worst of both worlds, right? It's, it's, we can study something as complicated as nutrition in a simple organism that can be put in a cage where you can control everything and where lifespan is short enough that you can actually measure how inputs affect outputs on a reasonable timescale. But to be clear, even studying the effects of nutrition in a confined environment using more complicated organisms, such as rhesus monkeys, as was the case in the NIA Wisconsin experiments from the 1980s, uh, which again, in the late 80s, I believe, that's an experiment that could never be replicated, right? I mean, it took, you know, north of 20 years to do an experiment in rhesus monkeys where you could still have perfect control over what they ate. And it's not entirely clear what the answer was. That was an experiment that sought to test the question, does caloric restriction extend life? And the answer turned out to be, it, depend if you, it depends if your monkey lives in Wisconsin or Bethesda, Maryland. Uh, of course, I'm being tongue in cheek. I think that study did answer the question if you knew how to read the study. I won't get into that because I, I think I have a whole chapter devoted to that in the book. Um, <clears throat> so that's, that's basically the long and short of why it's so difficult to study. So when you study it in humans, you can do controlled experiments <clears throat> in a research setting, but by definition, they can't tell you anything about health in the long-term sense because it would be almost impossible to confine humans for more than a month or so and control everything they ate. So one can do those types of experiments to understand very precise mechanisms of action, but those rarely translate to a clear understanding of health. If you want to understand what happens over the course of a year, three years, five years, 10 years, by definition, you have to do that outside of a hospital and you have to do it with patients being able to eat what they want. Um, there are some historical exceptions to this rule. So for example, the Minnesota coronary study, I think the actual intervention was probably closer to three or four years. I could be wrong on that, but it was done on patients in a nursing home. And you know, there you had the interesting situation where you had patients who were relatively old, therefore at high risk for ASCVD, but <clears throat> the investigators had complete control over what those patients ate because every meal was being provided to them. That experiment was rather interesting in that it did not yield what the hypothesis suggested. And again, I, I think there, there's lots that could be learned from that potentially, but this is why nutrition in humans tends to rely heavily on epidemiology where you are looking for patterns without doing an experiment, without randomization. So with your patients then, are you still continuing to try and manage their nutrition, manage their diet, not to you put everyone on the same diet, but more so what is that patient doing and how do you get the best metabolic health for that patient? Yeah, I mean, we think that the most important parameter for determining metabolic health is energy balance. Even the quote unquote best diet, if it's in excess of energy balance, will produce poor metabolic health. Regardless of what you think the best diet is, if you think it's a keto diet or a paleo diet or a low carb diet or a Mediterranean diet or a vegan diet, Take any version of those and consume them to excess to the point where you are no longer in energy balance and you are accumulating adipose tissue that leaks out of the subcutaneous space and you know gets into the liver, gets into the viscera, you're going to be unhealthy. I always think people are majoring in the minor and minoring in the major on nutrition and when they start to fight in dietary tribes on this stuff. There are some general principles. Like I do still think that clinically, in my experience, patients with profound insulin resistance tend to respond better to carbohydrate restriction as the best tool to reduce total intake. You have to create a caloric deficit in those patients. And in my experience, they respond better to carbohydrate restriction than they do straight caloric restriction 
or fat restriction. Ultimately, it matters most that you can find something that is manageable and sustainable over the long haul. None of this matters if you can, you know, adhere to the perfect diet for three months and then you can't. It's better to have a seven out of 10 diet in terms of quality and perfection that you can sustain indefinitely than a 10 out of 10 diet that you can only sustain for three or six months.